Uh, let me bring up our agenda real fast. Um, and next off, I believe I have Cam and you're gonna talk about programming. Um, I will go ahead and pass it along to you. Cool. Um, as Justin said, I am Cam Black. I'm the uh, uh, deployment specialist here at Live 365. Basically, what that means is, um, you know, any uh, you, you know new clients coming on board, um, I'm the one that helps them, uh, you know, get all set up and running and make sure they have all the the tools and resources they need to to be successful as a broadcaster. Um, so today we're going to be going over uh, a few a few different. Um, uh, programming best practices as it relates to the Live 365 uh, system. Uh, I'll try to make this as brief as I can. Um, I could. This is programming. I love this stuff. I could talk about you know programming and and music all day long. Um, so I've got three three main points here. Um, if you don't take away anything else from this, uh, pay attention to these you know these three points, the three most important things that I can possibly stress. Um, number one. Uh, with regards to your library, take your metadata seriously, please. Um, th there's, I mean, having good metadata is so important, and I can't stress this enough. Uh, making sure you have, you know, the artist and title uh, of each track filled out, as well as the album, if you're using the uh, the Auto DJ system here. Uh, and I will uh, go into the library here, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, but having good and accurate metadata um, helps the Auto DJ system. Uh, have a better idea of what tracks to select, uh, you know, when playing out songs from your library. And it's a good experience for the listener as well, because they can look, uh, you know, on your player or station page and see, you know, exactly what's playing or what's, you know, been recently played. Um, number two, even if you're only broadcasting with live DJ, meaning uh, you're using your own software, you're using your own encoder, an external uh, encoder or automation system, uh, it's still a good idea to upload some content. Uh, and set up the auto DJ. And the reason why is because you can use this as a fallback. Uh, you know, if the power goes out or your internet goes out, you know, we've all had um, issues like that before. Um, what that does is will allow your station, if your encoder goes offline for any reason, uh, it'll fall back to the auto DJ. It'll start playing tracks, um, you know, out of your auto DJ library and your station will stay online. You won't go offline at all. Um, so that's, that's super important. Um, you know, uptime is so important for a lot of stations. If you're, you know, if you're offline, then, you know, nobody's, nobody's hearing you. Uh, number three, have enough content. And this is something that's, that's pretty important. And I, we see this pretty often. If you're only going to upload, you know, 15 or 20 tracks, uh, the system's not going to have enough to choose from. You're going to run into some errors. Um, it, it might even stop playing entirely because it won't have anything to choose from. Uh, so upload plenty of content. Uh, at minimum, you, you know, a few hours worth. So, you know, like 100, 200 tracks, more if you can. Um, so that that's always super important to um, have enough content, even when you're going in and making categories, which I'll show you later on as well. Uh, have enough content in each category as well. Uh, so we're going to start off. I will show you. We're going to go into the, uh, the tracks library here, the media library. Uh, I can go ahead and sort this by title. Uh, and if you look here, um, you know, every track in this library has good, nice, clean metadata. The, al the, uh, uh, the song name is set, uh, the, the, the artist name is set, the album is set. Uh, we even have uploaded um, good album art for all of these, which will show up on your Live 365 station pages. Um, so very important, have good metadata. Um, the album is one that people sort of, you know, kind of neglect. Uh, or won't fill it in. And a lot of times you'll, you'll look at someone's library and it'll be, you know, untitled album. That's kind of a problem um, because the system will think that, uh, you know, it's all from, you know, one album and it won't have enough to select from. Fill out the album too. It's so important. Take the time, um, do your metadata up upright. It's, it's kind of a tedious process, uh, but I promise you it's worth it. Um, so there's a few different ways you can broadcast on Live 365 and do your, you know, your programming and your rotations. Number one, um, you can just upload a bunch of tracks and have the auto DJ do everything for you. So if we go into uh, under sources and auto DJ, uh, under track mix, we can just have a selection method. It's going to be random. It's going to pull tracks from your library at random um, out of these selected types. So we've got, you know, music uh, and then some station IDs, and we can select the number of station IDs uh, per hour. 
Uh, and then we've got, you know, separation rules. Don't play the same artist within, you know, 45 minutes. You can adjust this all the way up to 240 minutes. Um, again, with same album, same title, uh, and the same individual track. Uh, so you can all adjust those. Uh, but we can get more advanced. And if we go into the, let me show you, if we go under uh, schedule uh, and go into clock wheels, this is where we get really advanced. Uh, and start really diving into this. So if we go into the clock wheels, I've made a demo clock wheel here. And if you don't know what a clock wheel is, uh, I will show you. Uh, this is a clock wheel. It starts off by, you, you're gonna add music to uh, your categories. And then you can pick, when you add a clock wheel entry, you can pick either uh, a type if you want, uh, you know, just music, or you can have music that's part of a specific category. Uh, so we're going to go, if you think of a clock wheel, it's exactly that. It's a wheel. It's going to go, you know, what does a wheel do? It goes round and round. So you're going to go start at the top. It's going to play, you know, a song from this category first. It's going to move on to the next one. It's going to go to category two, um, then to a music, and then category three, it's going to play an ID. And then when it gets to the bottom, it's going to start over again at the top. So it'll play all of these in order and then, you know, start itself over. Uh, so we can do, uh, I will add an, a clock wheel entry here. Um, we'll just pick, you know, category two. You can have as many of these categories as you want. Um, I would definitely, you know, encourage you to have, have more, have as many as you want. And then we can pick an algorithm. We can do random. Uh, you can sort by oldest, oldest meaning uh, the, you know, least recently played. Uh, album, artist, or track, uh, and then we can have most recent album or artist. Uh, so we can do, um, you know, oldest track. And what I would say here is definitely have a good mix when you're making your clock wheels of random uh, and oldest track. Don't just put them all in oldest track because otherwise you're going to get into a situation where eventually it's going to start playing everything in order because, um, you know, everything will be the oldest track. So it'll start, you know, it'll get into uh the, the algorithm will it, it, it's just going to play everything in order so have a have a good mix uh of both random and oldest track or oldest artist definitely mix it up a little bit uh, this is pretty a pretty powerful tool there's a few different things that we can do with the clock wheels number one we can make a scheduled event for just the clock wheel uh, or number two we can have your station instead of playing by the auto dj it will play just the clock wheel so if we go again under sources uh, and to auto DJ back into track mix, instead of selection method random, go to selection method clock wheel. And then under the clock wheel, we can pick, you know, whatever clock wheel we want the auto DJ to use. And again, this is important, as I said before, have enough content because it's still going to have to look at these separation rules uh, in order to, you know, to make a determination as to what to play. So again, um, have enough content for sure. So now if we hit save, the auto DJ is going to start playing based upon that clock wheel that we made. Something else we can do, we can schedule an event with that clock wheel. So for example, if we want, um, you know, that clock wheel to play on uh, Saturday, we're going to have a special event with just that clock wheel. Uh, it's going to play uh, a certain type of music that you can schedule into those categories uh, at, let's do like Saturday at noon. Um, we can do, instead of a playlist, we can do a clock wheel. I'll show you a playlist as well, but we'll, we'll do clock wheel. We'll pick what clock wheel we want. We'll give it a title. It's going to play Saturday at noon. We want it to be I don't know, one hour, that's probably fine. And then uh, flexible or strict for scheduling. What does that mean? Flexible means that, you know, at the time you set your current, uh, at the time you set for this to play, uh, it's gonna allow whatever song is currently playing uh, to finish. Strict means that if you set it to play at noon, it's gonna start playing at noon, even if it means cutting off the track that's currently playing. So it's gonna be 100% starting exactly at noon. Um, I prefer the flexible one because, you know, having a, a song cut off um, 
it is usually not good for the type of stations that I run. Um, if you run, you know, an instrumental station or something like that, that might be different for you. Uh, we can turn on crossfading and then we can make it recurring as well. So if we want this to be every Saturday, we can do that. Uh, for this one, I'm not going to have recurring on and we'll just go ahead and hit save. Now we have our event here. If we scroll down and we can even click into it and it shows exactly based on the clock wheel that we made exactly what tracks are going to play and the time they're going to play at. So that's pretty cool. Now for scheduled events, we can also do playlists where you select the specific tracks rather than you, rather than selecting the categories. So I made a demo playlist here. Uh, I put you know, an hour of music or so in here on the right side is the playlist itself. Um, and then on the, uh, on the left side, we've got all the tracks in our library. We can scroll through, uh, we can go through all the different pages here. Uh, and then to add a track, we just go ahead and hit the plus and it adds over here to our playlist. Um, something that I see people do, um, fairly frequently is they'll come in here and they'll just start adding a bunch of music or only adding, you know, if the, if you look at the, you know, the first page and you start adding stuff, uh, you'll only add things from, you know, one specific artist. Uh, the playlist isn't going to like that and it's not going to schedule because you're going to run into uh, separation rule issues, DMCA violations, and it's not going to schedule. So again, uh, have enough content and, and mix it up, add stuff from, you know, a bunch of different artists and different albums. Uh, and then we can even, once we have our, all the songs we want in the playlist, we can shuffle it up if we want to do that as well. And we can save our playlist. And then you can schedule that playlist again under the events. Uh, we'll create a new event. And this time we'll choose playlist. Choose the playlist we want. Again, flexible is fine. We'll turn on the crossfading. Uh, and again, that was, a, that was about a one hour playlist. So we'll schedule it for an hour. Uh, and this time that's going to be, we're going to put it Saturday. Uh, how about one o'clock? That'll work. So this will be, you know, show number two. And then we'll save it. And here it is. With exactly the tracks that we have in that playlist. And it'll, if this is a good example, if you want to, you know, have uh, a playlist of tracks that play in the order you want them to play in. Uh, so you can definitely do that as well. Now, a couple other examples, uh, especially for the clock wheels. Let's say, for example, um, uh, every Thursday from here on out is going to be like Throwback Thursday or something. So we can we can do that. If we go into, let's go under media. We're, we're going to make a new category, uh, and then we will yeah we'll add a category. Let's call it. Let's call it throwbacks. We can give it a nice color. Um, how about this color? Now we'll go back into our track library. Uh, let me sort these. And I'll go into uh, let me pick some tracks that don't have categories assigned. Yeah, that should work. Uh, let's just pretend that these are all throwback songs. We use the bulk action and then edit the category. And then we can put them in that throwback category. Hit save. And there they are. So now we're gonna, we can go and use that category in a clock wheel. If we go under schedule, clock wheels. Add a new clock wheel. Now let's make a, uh, a clock wheel that's specific for, uh, for a throwback Thursday. So if we type in throwback Thursday, again, we can give it a color. Uh, yeah. How about that? I will click into it. This is a blank clock wheel. So we're going to build this one from scratch. So we're going to add a clock wheel entry type or category. And we will use our, you know, our throwbacks category. 
uh, started off with a, you know, a random algorithm. Uh, and you can definitely play around with this and, and do whatever you like. Um, definitely have some fun with it. We'll keep adding some more throwbacks. Let's do oldest track. That's probably fine. Uh, and then oh, let's do it again. And then maybe oldest artist. And then after these three songs play, how about we put in, you know, a station ID, like a jingle or a sweeper. So this is as simple as your clock wheel can be. Um, you know, it'll play, you know, three throwbacks, it'll play an ID, and then it'll start over again at the top, play three more throwbacks, and then an ID. Um, it'll, it'll go over and over again for as long as you schedule it for. Uh, so now we can take this clock wheel, go back to our events, create a new event, let's make it a clock wheel. Now we have our throwback Thursday. Uh, again, flexible is fine. Uh, let's call it throwback Thursday. We'll make, we'll schedule it for Thursday at noon. So how about every Thursday for uh, two hours at noon every week until uh, and you can schedule this, you know, into the future, as far into the future, pretty much as you want. So we'll go like every Thursday for the next like six months is going to be throwback Thursday at noon. So now we do that. Let's we'll save. And there we have it. There's our, our throwback Thursday block. If We can click into it and see all the tracks that are scheduled. So again, if it's going to play the three songs, it's going to play a station ID three more songs and then another station ID. And it's just going to go on and on for that two hour block. So that's how the clock wheels work. Uh, another example that we can use this for is uh, around the holidays. Uh, some broadcasters like to start mixing in uh, Christmas music every once in a while, but you don't want it to be taken over your whole station, um, you know, a month before, before Christmas. So you can start adding, you know, one song in here and there. Uh, so what we can do, we can make a new category. This is just to give you guys another example of how to use this tool. Um, call it uh, Christmas. Uh, let's make it red because why not? Let's go back to our tracks. And then let me go to a different page here just to kind of save some time. Oh, I've already put some of those in a category. Uh, this will work. Let's pretend that these are all um, that these are all all Christmas songs. So we'll go ahead uh, and we will add these to our Christmas category. Now, when we go back to our clock wheel, we can edit an existing one. Say we're already using this demo clock wheel for our our rotation. So all we have to do is go into it and then add a new clock wheel entry. We'll pick Christmas music. And then uh, random is probably fine. We can hit save. And then it's like going to be at the bottom of the list. And then again, you can click on it and drag it to wherever you want it to be uh, in your clock wheel rotation. So we want it to be right here. Um, so every once in a while, now our clock wheel is going to throw in one Christmas song. Um, so that's just another example of how we can use that. Um, let me show you guys a, a couple of errors as well that you might run into. So if we go into, uh, I'm going to go in and make a new category. I'm going to show you what can happen. Um, so let's do new category, demo category four. back into the tracks. Now, for the sake of this demo, let's only go ahead and put these two tracks um, in our in our category. So we'll give it, you know, two songs. It's gonna be in category four. Let's save those. Now we see this song has 
two categories now, which is totally fine. You can put you can put the same song in multiple categories if you want. Now we'll go back. We can do a new clock wheel. Uh, let's use this one. I don't think I've used this one yet. Let's get rid of this. Now, if we only put in demo category four, random, let's add another one. Let's give it all this track. Um, yeah, and we can toss an ID in there for good measure too. Now, what happens when we try to schedule this? We go into events. Let's make a new event. Clock wheel, we'll give it the demo clock wheel two. Uh, and then we'll do, we'll give it uh, show number three. That's fine. We'll set it for about Friday at 10 a.m. It's going to be a one hour show. Nope, not a one minute show, a one hour show. Yeah, we'll turn the crossfading on and then we'll hit save. But whoops, look up here. We got an error that says uh, I could not select a DMCA compliant track uh, for you know that random clock wheel event. Uh, again, this is going back to what I said earlier. Have enough content, uh, not only in your library, but in your categories. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck with these errors. Uh, so let me show you how to fix it. All we have to do, go back to tracks. Uh, and we'll just, we're just going to give it some more. Give it some more to work with. Um, yeah, we can resort these by title, however we want to do it. Uh, yeah, this is this will work. We'll select all these tracks now. Now, if we put it back in this demo category four, hit save. Now, keep in mind, we're not going to touch the clock wheel at all. We're going to leave the actual clock wheel exactly as it is and not touch it at all. All we're doing is adding more tracks to the category. So if we go back into the schedule, events, try to schedule that same exact event again with this clock wheel. That's our demo clock wheel too. We haven't touched it. It's the same. Show four. It's going to be on Friday at 10 for an hour. Turn our crossfading on. Now, if we hit save, there we go. Now it works. And we haven't, we didn't change the clock wheel. All we did was add more music to the category. Uh, again, that point that I made, have enough content for sure. Um, so if we look here, we have our event. We can look and see what tracks are going to play during that event. It's going to play, uh, you know, two tracks from that category, a station ID, um, you know, two more station ID over and over for that entire hour. Uh, and that's really all about all I have to show. Um, it's a it's a really powerful tool. Um, and another thing that I would mention is uh, if there's a, a certain feature that you'd like to see for the auto DJ or the scheduler, let us know. Um, we're usually pretty good about adding stuff like that. For example, the uh, the clock wheels, um, the clock wheels was a was a community suggested feature that we added. So uh, definitely, if it's something you want to see, uh, let us know for sure. Um, so we'll go back here uh, again, the three most important things. Number one, take the metadata seriously. Uh, there, there's a lot of tools in here where you can even do it in bulk. Uh, you can bulk update your metadata. If we select it, um, we can go edit metadata. For example, if you have a bunch of songs that are you know, from the same album, you can select all those, put the album in here, uh, hit save, uh, definitely, take the metadata seriously for sure. Um, number two, even if you're only broadcasting in, in live DJ mode, uh, meaning using your own automation, uh, your encoder, uh, still try to set up the auto DJ anyway as a fallback uh, in case you know anything happens uh, at home or in your studio where the power goes out or the internet goes out. And again, number three, as, I, as I've said a bunch of times, uh, have enough content. Uh, you can't, um, I know this is kind of a slippery slope, but I always say you can't, you can't have enough. Um, maybe others would disagree with me, but in this case, uh, more gives the system more to work with. You're, you're going to run into, you know, less errors, have less issues. 
uh, everything's going to work uh, much better when you have uh, more music for sure. Uh, and that that so that about wraps it up for me. I think I don't I don't think I really have anything else to show off. Um, again, if you have any questions, go ahead and hold them for the end, uh, and I will go ahead and turn this back over to Justin. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Cam. And thank you for the great T-ball. Actually, I'm going to take your T-ball real quick. And Cam was very right. He mentioned, uh, you know, the big thing that drives the way we build product here and everything that we do here is the feedback that we get from our customers. And, and a lot of the features that we have built are based around feedback that we got from different from you got the community in general. And so I do want to show you guys actually and kind of take Cam's T-ball there and show you guys how to submit feature requests to us and something that is some, we look at and monitor a great deal and it, it takes a great deal of precedence in our road mapping process and so um, if you go to feedback.live365.com uh, this is where you can upvote suggestions you can add new suggestions you'd see it's a self-service portal if you want to add any feature requests to come up you can put your suggestion any descriptions anything at all that you'd like to kind of share with our team uh, we have tons of you already have contributed to this. So thank you very much. Uh, we've seen them. They definitely take a lot of weight with us as we're building products because our goal is to build products that empower you guys to be able to create great stations and to be able to create an awesome community. So tons of requests have already been through. Tons have been done. Some tons have been are in the planning stages and are being actively worked on right now. I can assure you that. And tons are in our roadmap for future quarters. So you, we have a great deal of stuff in here. I encourage everyone to go on here and upvote things that you like, add new things that you like. Like I said, we really do take a great deal of value in this and, and we want to hear from our audience because we want to make sure we're building tools that, that help all of you guys create better stations and create better content. So, um, okay, on that note, let's get back into our schedule here.